Okay. Look at that mulch. So you have guava leaves, you have some broken down wood chips. And if we go down below, look at how nice and black your soil. And look at the wow, worms, worms inside there. Yeah. They're big worms. Uh, they're babies. Nice. You're doing it the right way, Lax. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, if you, I don't know if the camera can see, but the entire soil I'm holding right now is moving. <laughs> it's so full of life. And if you guys, uh, the smell, it smells like the forest. It's very perfect. Look at the root, small root. Oh, amazing. I'm sorry I dug milk that out. Root. That's okay. It's a milk root. That's fine. Six to seven inch. It's a soil, black soil. It is. Look at it. It's like Look pure that, worm man. castings. Ooh, worm castings. Yeah. I should get my shovel. Yeah. And so now in my hand is what's about six inches down. Imagine if we went two feet down. Yeah, this is solid. So you're very proactive. Yes, yeah, absolutely. People yeah. have to walk in the dirt if they want to do something like this. They're not going sure. to get this and sitting at the home on the couch. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got to get your hands dirty like we're doing right now. Come here, Mini. Come here, Mini. Come, come, come in. She's like, come I don't know if I want that guy. Come on in, come on in, Trita. Come on in, Trita. Yes. Hey, Lax, thank you for having me over at your garden. You've been to my garden several times with your family, and we have met um, for years now at different gardening clubs in town, like the Rare Fruit Growers, but I've never been to your garden before, so I'm sorry it's taking me so long to come here. Hey, needless to say, you're my inspiration. Okay? No, okay, really? Not just to me, many, many people. Um, it's my honor to be to have you here, okay? Thank you for coming. Well, if that's true, I feel really special that, you know, anything that I've done has made you grow like this because you are growing a very beautiful garden full of a lot of edibles. And you were mentioning that you want people to comment down below because you would love to see the discussion and get in there and answer the comments. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that because um, those of you out there who are fans of the Vegan Athlete channel, I really appreciate it, but people who are trolls love to troll and be negative in the comments. I'm sure that myself and Lax will get in there, answer your questions, and kind of communicate with you in the comments. But thank you for giving us the time to tour us around, and I love that you want to be on camera because a lot of times gardeners don't want to be on camera, but I love being with the gardener because you're the expert yes. of your garden. Absolutely. And you can turn me around and show me everything that you're doing. And you are doing some edibles here in the front yard, but I wanted to start with the backyard if that's okay. Okay, so front yard, um, I have only roses. I have an HOA policy, so I cannot have any deep Because you're in an HOA. HOA. That is amazing because a lot of people who follow me are in HOAs. And they think that it restricts them to not be able to grow a garden. Yeah, I, I don't think in the backyard. Okay. As long as there are a few restrictions, it depends on different HOA. So you have some restrictions in the front yard. So you have, we're going to show everybody in a second. You have yeah. roses and you have some neem. I have planted even neem. I uh -huh. have sushu. I have hibiscus. That's it, actually. So I don't know. I, I've kept it light in the front yard. And it looks very beautiful. So I'm yeah. sure the HOA enjoys how aesthetically pleasing it is. Let's go back there Let's and check out the backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Come on in. Okay, so, and you are excited for me to come over here today, even though I feel <laughs> like you're giving me too big of an ego. You even gave me a nice welcome sign. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have the boutique, but at least I want to give you this. <laughs> no, perfect. I feel so welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And you got me a nice glass of coconut water before we started this video, so now I feel charged up. And That's, That's our culture, man. Lax, from first glance, your yard is not humongous. It's not like it's five acres. You're on a normal size home here with a nice size backyard, um, but you've done a lot with the space. Thank you. Yes. So it looks very beautiful. So I wanted to ask you what made you want to garden when you first started doing this? Your family is from America. Where is your where is your family from? Okay, so I'm I'm born and brought up from India. Okay. okay. Um, and you've lived in um, many different cities many, in the United States. Yeah. Um, this is my eighth driving license in the United States in the last 12 years. Wow. So my job took me to different locations, okay, being a consultant and sales guy. Okay. Um, but Arizona is totally different, actually. So how, how so? Why three, is Arizona 365 different? days sun. Yeah. No complaints. No snow. Mm -hmm. No complaints. Not too much rain. Okay. Except for the summer. Um, but you said that you used to deal. live in you used to live in Oregon, yes. and you loved it there, except for you would get depressed for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Oregon, because of the rain. Oregon. Oregon. Um, no sun. So that's in Oregon. So no sun there. Uh, kind of depressed, but here is different. Like 365 days, sunny. And except that three months, it's all how we are going to create the microclimate and take it up for things. Uh, Phoenix is the better place, I would say. But but you think Phoenix is better place for gardeners? For, for gardeners and you, also you for do. living. For living. Okay? Oh, okay. Okay. My home is costing two million dollars in California. Yeah. So I have a great letter. Okay, because so. it was, it's a lot 
the cost of living is better here than in California. Absolutely. absolutely. So there are multiple reasons Phoenix is better. Mm -hmm. So people uh, sometimes complain about the sun, summer, but it should not be a problem. It's two months. You know, somebody like you who's lived in many different locations, it's it's nice when you have found that one place that appeals to, to yes. your interests. Yes, yes, that's it. none other than the Phoenix. And part of your interest is gardening. So what first made you want to garden? Yes. Definitely, I want to talk about that actually. It all started when I was in fourth grade. Really? Okay, my uncle, uh, who had close to 4,000 square feet um, mm -hmm. in the yard, mm -hmm. and he started planting all the all different plants that we hear from you. Like he had close to 60 fruit trees. Wow. I, with him, when I was in fourth grade, fifth grade, two years, we were continuously planting. Mm -hmm. And when I was in college, like after seven, eight years, I saw like 50 jackfruits in a huge tree. That what? is one among the trees. Where is he growing? This is back in India? In India. Wow. The place is called Neveli, the red soil. So we oh. need not to add the compost. We need not to add all this amendment. Just move the soil for one feet and one foot and plant it. And it was grow, probably like, rich in minerals. Rich in minerals. Rich in mm -hmm. minerals. So that's my inspiration, number one. Okay. Number two, um, I was, I wanted to do that in the US, but never had a chance. Because I live in the East Coast, there's no point in doing it. And I live in California, but in an apartment, not in a house. Because it's so expensive to live there. Expensive to live there. Mm -hmm. So when I got a house with a close to wall, I thought, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's the whole, um, uh, in, uh, the reason why I started here. And we're going to go back here and see a tour of everything you planted, but folks can see right now that it is very lush yes. back here. And when you first got it, was it just a lot or what did it look like before? Yeah. I'm going to send you a picture to you. Okay, we'll it pop has, it up on the screen right, yes. right now. And uh, it has got a nice grass, golf grass. I love okay. even green, even that time it was green. Yeah. And then typical palm trees and all those oleander, um, yeah. what do you call it, as um, desert trees. Yeah. Um, like then, landscaping plants. Landscaping plants. That's how it started, 24 months ago. Oh, just, that, just two years ago? Just, just two years ago. Wow. It's like 25th month what we are, where we are today. Okay. And the first year I planted close to like 17 plants. Mm -hmm. Then I've, I've seen growing some of them like Tyrone, like mulberry, fig, banana, all of 15 feet you see here, even sugar cane. Yeah. And it's the second uh, phase is uh, uh, during the 2017. Okay, so where um, I planted, uh, I brought a few other tropical and subtropical plants, mm -hmm. but only the difference between the first year and the second year is I did a lot of mistakes in the first year. Yeah. Where you can imagine having an avocado tree in the middle of the yard yeah. with no production to it. But no, I did not have totally avocado. Totally join, join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Same so thing. I had a sugar apple, for example. Yeah. Okay. Then sapote, for example. Mm -hmm. Coconut cream. They're very sensitive to the heat. The you know, coconut cream mango. Mango, of course. Yeah. So all of them are standing in the center of the yard. Then the second day when I learned about the microclimate, it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. I come to you, I mean, I came to you almost four or five times. I learned what you do. Oh, okay. To my garden, yeah. To my garden. Right. Uh, so then I corrected my mistakes and trying to position the plants. Now what you see is like they're protecting each other. Mm -hmm. So first year, I almost protected almost all the plants during summer and winter. So do you feel like your success grows even faster? every year and it gets easier because of the microclimate? Absolutely. So uh, I tell the people when it is real estate, it's a location, location, location. When yeah. it is gardening, fruit, yeah, back orchard, it is microclimate, microclimate, microclimate. Uh, that's, that's great it. advice. Okay. And so, and it seems like as your trees grow bigger, it almost makes them grow better because they help to uh, insulate yes. each other. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, you're going to see that actually, the, the lone gun, for example, that I planted recently, which um, is the dragon eye fruit. Dragon eye fruit, basically, uh, which I can sensitively plant. Uh, yeah. You know where I plant it. You see the, here the carry mango, which is open towards the west because they can take the heat. Right. So uh, I'm excited to show you guys in all of those. Well, let's start our journey. Of course. Okay. <laughs> show me the way. Yeah. So in my garden, one of the things I really wanted to do because my martial art teachers had koi ponds, I wanted to put in a koi pond not realizing that a koi pond would ultimately become an instrumental part of being a successful gardener. Right. So you also kind of are very excited about your pond um, because it's a part of your edible landscape. Right. Um, and you have some nice koi fish in there too. Yes. So tell us about this, this pond. You built okay. this yourself. So again, I'm going to say, I'm going to repeat this again and again. Okay, you have to accept it. You are my inspiration on the pond. <laughs> Well, I'm not okay. an expert. That's a I, huge pond, but it's pretty big. big. So if you look at my 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 pond is like a 30 foot by 20 foot by six foot deep pond. Wow. But <laughs> that's um, a swimming pool almost. <laughs> it, it is a pool. It is a pool. But I do like it now that it's finished. It was very difficult to build. It was a lot of hard manual labor. But I was able to follow your pond process. Yes. On my urban gardening in Arizona group. Yes. You were very good about posting right. for the garden members all the process of your exactly. koi pond. Exactly. That was very cool. So this, that was an, this is a 90 days project. Okay. In yeah. three months. Three months. Okay. Three months I built this. Of course, I did not spend like eight hours a day, mm -hmm. but mostly in the evening time and daytime. Mm -hmm. uh, the weekends, the whole weekends. 
Um, so it is basically like a nine feet and six feet long. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, everything was done by me except the casket, the waterfall. Okay. It's got the, I have the stones like 200 pounds, so I have to engage a contractor who can do that with the crane, all the stuff. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. okay. So cool. I have the design for this. I just simply drawn. Uh, mm -hmm. In a paper, piece of paper. Then I started digging. Then I yeah. kind of talk to people like you, mm -hmm. trying to understand what what mistake I do. Yeah. Okay. So learn from that and started. But one one thing I want to tell the people is you got to be very careful when it comes to the leaking. Okay, that's one thing which should not happen when you build a pond. No, hundred percent. So it happened to me, unfortunately. Okay. I so had I had a leaking constantly. Absolutely. I bought a what is that very expensive liner, thinking that that will never happen. But I I found twenty holes in it. You did. Okay. I have to go inside. And I have to close myself, sit in the dark, try to see in the sunlight, then I found 20 holes. Now, the one thing people don't realize about um, a pond and the liner is that um, once you put a patch on the liner, yes. the hole actually becomes stronger because it's like two layers of liner together. So, but if you wake up one morning and you didn't find the hole, you can wake up and your pond's empty. Absolutely. Have, so, you, have you found that's happened? Yes, it's happened. Yeah. What I did was, I made it simple. I just tore it, actually. <laughs> then I placed a different liner. Oh, you did? Okay. okay. So the details are in my video. Yeah. Okay, so what, what you are have the liners on your YouTube channel? Yes. Okay, I'll the put progress. the link to your channel down below for Perfect. folks out there who yeah. are watching. Perfect. Absolutely. So if, if not the bigger ponds, still we can build a small pond like this. Uh, if you have at least 3,000 square feet, yeah. Sure. Okay. Again, even if you have 2,000 square feet, yeah, it's still it's doable, actually. Yeah. I think what you have probably found that I found, too, is that it's a lot of labor. Yes. Even even a, a, a pond of your size, like a medium size, is beautiful, the water, but it needs constant work yes. to keep it flowing. And then when I go hiking out in nature yes. and I see lakes and rivers, I realize that whether or not you believe in God, God's pretty good at building ponds. Yes. <laughs> because when we build a little backyard one, it's very difficult, very difficult. to but, keep it going. But this makes a difference, actually. When I started building, of course, my family members built, man, this is a huge lever. Are you going to do that? Yeah. Should you do that? Yeah. I said, because it's going to cost me eight grand. All okay. that I spent was close to two grand. That, okay. That's all you spent? I yeah. saved six grand. That's my labor here. That's mm -hmm. a big money. Okay? Because you did it yourself. Yes, did it myself. Yeah. And uh, every week, there is a maintenance required. I have a vacuum cleaner, pond vacuum cleaner. You vacuum this pond. It's a still small pond, still you can do that. Sure. And there is a way what we can feed the fish. Uh, if not, get into the details of that, but we have to limit the food. So mm -hmm. that is always like... Uh, that, so, that, so they're not pooping and gunking up the water. And, and, but you can also use the water to water your trees with. Yes, I do that. Yes. I take every week, I mean, today at this weather, I'm watering at least like uh, 10 days once, mm -hmm. 8 to 10 days once. Mm -hmm. And I take two gallons of water from here for each of the trees. So I have close to 42 trees in this 3,500 square feet here. And tell us really quick, who is the elephant god that is here watching over your this pond? Lord Ganesha and uh, Ganapati. He comes first. All the way. <laughs> okay, so Lax, let's start in this corner of your yard. This is kind of the beginning of the backyard. And this is a cayenne pepper plant that's yes. seven feet tall. Yes. I mean, I'm 6'1", this one's a foot over my head. Yes, this is a year old. That's amazing. I bought it for three dollars, and so far I yielded five dollars out of it. That's a great investment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you're getting just tons of spicy T peppers. Tons and tons. And since you're from India, you probably do cook with a lot of spice. Yes, absolutely. Last week, my wife collected um, most of the chilies, and we have close to one year wow. stock for one year. One year stock. One year stock. And you guys, so you guys just dry them out. Dry them out. That's and amazing. we use for different purposes actually. And it looks like down below you have a bunch of mint. Yes. So is this chocolate mint? Yeah, it's a regular pink mint. Oh. Um, it, I, it was it's there all nice. over the yard. Mm -hmm. And I have to restrict that because they are occupying the most of the places actually. Yeah, because so they're, they're very invasive. Closet. Very invasive. But absolutely. it's a good problem to have for a backyard garden because it's a constant food source. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you can make take your coconut water with a bit of mint in there. And <laughs> got a nice I, 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 I use it in vodka. Do you? <laughs> That's so <laughs> and you also have some bamboo growing yes. here. I have to transplant bamboo for a reason. I'm going to tell you guys. I plant. I was having a bamboo in different west location. Mm -hmm. Then I thought I moved it here because I planted peach on it. Squared up its peach. Oh, I see. Okay. Another thing is is you have this fig tree that's in your neighbor's yard. Yes. And this is an amazing neighbor <laughs> because it's one of those stripy uh, tiger panache figs. Yes. That's very hard to find. I have never seen a tiger panache of this size. Oh, yes. Even is mine is half the size. Okay. And it's loaded with, look at these fruits. If the camera can see how beautiful the stripy fig is here. It's a very unique looking fig and it actually is like a red color on the inside. Yes. So, so tell me about this fig tree. <laughs> this is not my fig tree. Right. This is neighbor's fig tree. They have three fig trees, okay? Okay. First, before I did all of these, they were not fruiting that much. Okay. Okay. Then when I started planting my trees, I constantly water, then I found they were 
throwing the fruits like anything. Okay. Yeah. And the funny thing about this is that uh, every guest when they come to my home during uh, the summer, uh -huh. they get a ziplock. Oh, I just uh, are you serious? Yes, it's all mine actually. They said, okay, it's all yours. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's exactly. So, so the plant tree is not in my yard. It's yeah. an extended yard. Absolutely. I get benefited of that actually. And think about, this is what I tell my friends, think about if every homeowner yes. planted an edible landscape, we wouldn't need the grocery store anymore. No, no. So you guys are really doing a great job yeah. here and two neighbors getting together to right. grow some amazing food. Absolutely. So we share the foods actually. So they come to me, they take the mulberry. Okay, I'm coming back here in the summer when yeah. these are ready <laughs> and I will, I'll, I'll trade you something for a Ziploc bag because these are my favorites. Yes, you can take some cuttings too. I gave some oh, cuttings of this as well. That'd be amazing. <laughs> so this mango is a carry mango or carry. coconut cream? This is carry mango. Carry mango. Okay. They, and they, for folks out there who have never tried a carry mango. So this is a carry mango tree and for those who haven't tasted one, I find that they're they're not only a very traditional mango taste, but there's no fiber. They're very smooth. They're very smooth. They're very tasty. So I tell the people, if you think about top three mangoes, mm -hmm. number one is a curry. Many okay. people love curry. The second one many people love is the like coconut cream. Okay. The only thing is it's kind of sensitive to the heat. Mm. Me being from India, we taste a lot of mangoes. You guys usually, a lot of people, my friends from India tend to like the Alfonso. Alfonso. Alfonso is one of the mango. Okay. okay like that we have Himam Pasant, for example. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, some uh, specific mangoes in India. Though Those are called King of Mangoes. Okay. Yeah. Very expensive mangoes. Sure. But, but the coconut cream tastes taste, so incredible. Man, that is one thing I want to talk about is my coconut cream. I never tasted a mango like that before. Amazing. Before. Amazing mango. Yeah. Then carry, I fell in love. I've seen in yard, I've seen very successful with this tree in, right. in being in Phoenix. So. No wonder I planted this. Now for people that are in like Southern California, Phoenix area, maybe even Texas or Las Vegas, what are some of the secrets? Cause your mango looks fantastic and um, you have a lot of mulch down below. So what are some of your secrets to growing mango successfully here? Okay, number one is the way we, have, way, the way we need to plant. It's always better to have twice the size of whatever the pot you have. Okay. You go for five gallon, 10 So gallon, when you had the gallon. pot of this tree, cause this came to you as a tree already. Tree already. And you dug the hole twice the size of the And I, I, I'm crazy guy, I dug four feet by four feet by 30 inch. Okay. okay. That's a really big roll. So you used some of the Arizona soil, but also you amended it. Um, there's a person locally here in town named Jay Berenger who runs a Facebook group as well for right. gardeners. Right. And you got his soil, which is full of a lot of locally made compost, worm castings, some lava sand, Absolutely. things like that. Absolutely. See, that four top four things people have to think about. The one is the soil, okay? Yeah. 30% use your native soil. It's going to give you the oxygen, mm -hmm. okay? Number two is the compost, or the, the the best of the amendment soil you can get locally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number three is the minerals um, mm. like osamide, okay? yeah. warm castings. Right. Those things have to go for most of the plants. But this guy loves the warm castings. The only thing the difference is the mango don't like the nitrogen. You got to be very careful on the fertilizers. Right. So do not ever use any fertilizer. As you know, I tell the people, no fertilizers in this yard. So like, it's all so no organic. manures, no manures, kind of no manures. Bunch of mulch. It looks yes. like a bunch of guava leaves yes. here on top. Yes. Yes. I, I trimmed the guava tree recently. Yeah. So them, then you will see like at least two inch mulch. Okay. Look at that mulch. So you have guava leaves, you have some broken down wood yes. chips. Yes. And if we go down below, look at how nice and black your soil. And look at wow. the worms wow. inside there. Yeah. They're big worms. Uh, they're babies. Nice. You're doing it the right way, Lax. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, if you, I don't know if the camera can see, but the entire soil I'm holding right now is moving. <laughs> it's so full of life. And if you guys, uh, the smell, it smells like the forest. It's very perfect. Look at the root, small root. Oh, amazing! I'm sorry, I dug milk that out. Root. That's okay. It's a milk root. That's fine. Yeah, perfect. They're very really good. So, and then I also want to ask you if we, um, if the camera can see behind us right now. One thing I want to ask you about is see how we're walking right now. What we're walking on is not the native ground. This is wood chips that you put down, but. Where in my property, I brought in almost uh, 60 loads of wood chips. And one load is a five foot tall pile that goes the entire driveway. So 60 loads of wood chips in my property. You found a source for wood chips. They were already chopped up and broken down right. it's to a broken down level. Yes, it's broken down. It was sitting there getting cooked almost for four months. Okay. okay so I have close to 70 yards and of mulch, 70 to 80 yards of mulch. And you hunted around for this deal? Yes, absolutely. I hunted all over actually. <laughs> so this is kind of the wood chips that you start with? Yes, yes. I mean, look at how broken down it looks. Yes. So what I did is I, ch I removed the grass and I put wood chip. You, you, you are standing on the wood chip almost like yeah, two feet high. Like two feet high. Minimum two feet. Yeah, because I'm easily two foot higher than your concrete over there. I just going to increase there. It's going to be yeah. three feet high. Wow. So this makes a difference. It does. And then look and at look at how if we just go into a common area 
and I dig down, how black it gets the deeper that I dig. Yeah. And look, we can wow. see all the mycelium, mycelium. and the mycorrhizae, Ooh. which is all that white spiderweb looking stuff. So you're definitely allowing these plants to absorb a lot of nutrients yeah. and you're also allowing them to communicate together through that it protects that web absolutely two, two two reasons right the main reason during the winter my yard is always like 10 degrees less uh, more than the regular temperature in the win in, in, in the, the winter, winter it's warmer warmer which is and why your tropicals do so well here correct during the summer it keeps things cooler it's cooler and what i do is i just sprinkle the water all over isn't, that, isn't that crazy yeah it's crazy so can I do one thing really quick? Let, let's do a little experiment. Mm -hmm. This is a common area of your yard, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that these wood chips on top are the newest ones, right? Yes. So if you yes. want to hold that really quick. Yes. So those are the newest ones. Yeah. And then I'm going to dig down and those are like, uh, look at that mycelium. Myce <laughs> See how white that is? That's incredible. So in your other hand, I'll hand you some of the mycelium here. Yes. And then I'm going to dig down a foot and see what happens when we're about one foot down into the ground. Yeah, if you I can are, do that. You are six to seven inch, it's a soil, black soil. It is, look at it, it's like look pure worm man. castings. Ooh, worm castings, yeah. I should get my shovel. Yeah. And so now in my hand is what's about six inches down. Imagine if we went two feet down. Yeah, this is all it. So this right here, let me hold it in one hand. This is the start. Yes. This is maybe a couple months later. Correct. And this is a couple years later. Yeah, almost like four months later. Or four to four six months, months later. In six months it becomes soil. Wow. Because I'm not putting a big wood chips. And also I noticed some of the people, they think it's a wood chip, but they put uh, wood, uh, they like regular wood, right? They yeah. kind of make it into pieces and they put it, no, it's not going to work out. Okay. We need a minimum wood chips. Right. Okay. Now what I do is I let it go a little up. over, chopped up more. How did you find this source? Did you check Craigslist? Did you call different places? Uh, How did you find it? Absolutely. So uh, I buy it from HMS Landscapes. Okay. 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 And uh, which, I started which shopping is a local around, person. Local here. person. I started yeah. shopping around all over the Arizona. Okay. And then I went and seen in person. I smelled them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you had to walk in the dirt. So you're very proactive. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. People yeah. have to walk in the dirt if they want to do something like this. They are not going sure. to get this and sitting at the home on the couch. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you got to get your hands dirty like we're doing right now. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great, man. And I remember when you um, came to my garden tour for the second time, you brought your phone and you were so <laughs> excited to show me pictures of the wood chips. Nice. And right. nobody in my family understands me. I get so excited about black soil and wood chips, they think I'm just a psycho talking about <laughs> dirt. So you and I know that excitement of finding healthy soil. Absolutely. It's very exciting for the yes. gardener. See, now, now the good thing is I can plant anything anywhere. Yeah. I can plant anywhere. I can put a vegetable, vegetable here, it's going to grow. All that I need is just sprinkle some water, it's going to grow. That's the advantage. Well, just so that I know that we could easily make this video like six hours long. Yeah, really. Make. Um, let's go through a few things you have planting. Yeah. So, right here, you have another mango tree. This is carry mango. Okay. I have Bonanza peach. Bonanza peach, my favorite peach. peach. I, I planted here just to get a look for my farm. Which is a miniature peach. Miniature peach. Mm -hmm. um, then I have my beautiful giant mulberry. This one's so a, a giant any, mulberry. Yeah, anytime any family, my friends come, they start the two here. They get the mulberry. And, and that's and all happiness, right? You, yeah. You grow the fruit and give it to someone, they eat and feel happy, that's all happiness. So when your family comes over, they get their happiness from this mulberry? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the two starts begins here. Okay. So anytime there is a fruit, people comes in, they first taste the fruit. And okay. do yours ripen in about March? Uh, yeah, March, April, May. I yeah. get fruits continuously. That's amazing. Yeah, amazing. This is like, what you see is like a one and a half years plant. And they lose their leaves in the winter, so yeah. you can use the leaves for mulch. Still, I love the foliage. Look at the Look at how it's big a bigger it is. one. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, that's so incredible. So this is one of the plants people should have. They start. So I advise the people when you, when they start the gardening, um, start with mulberry, fig. Whether or not you like the fruits, but start planting them because it's going to help you on the microclimate. Start the tree that can grow bigger, quicker, First. faster because they'll create the microclimate for your other stuff. Right. If we go past, we have like a jujube. Sugar jujube. Sugar I love jujube. sugar jujube. Okay. It's losing its leaves for the winter. Yes. There, there are three stages I found, they're super sweet. One is green, other one is half ripened, the fully ripened. All three stages, they're really good. And you're also growing papaya? The one of my best plant. Okay, after 20 I, years, I would say I tasted a papaya like in back in my country. Yeah. And this is Mexican papaya. That's I had close to 35 fruits this year. And I'm sure you started with this one as a... Fruits, okay? I okay. ate only two fruits. I okay. rest of them to my friends, okay? You did? <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, how many fruits came off this tree this year? 30 plus. 30 plus. There's one plus. tree. One tree. And I'm sure you started with it either as a seed or a little baby. Just like, you know, two feet high. That's yeah. it. Two feet uh -huh. high and mulch. You'll see the mulch. Yes, it is standing on the mulch, almost five foot mulch. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. The way we plant the papaya is different from other trees, actually. It does not like the water under the feet. Right. So they want to keep it dry. Okay. 
and it looks like um, your companion planting by putting some edible Thai roselle yes. hibiscus. I, yes. No, this is yeah. You, this is we call gongra. Oh, you okay. call it gongra? Yeah, I don't use the botanical name. Okay. Get confused with that because we eat. Most yeah, of the time. sure, sure. <laughs> it's a gongra, and I planted this during the summer as a companion to keep the root cooler. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah.